everybody, I think we reach to uh, so far 30 attendees. Inshallah, the rest, they will join us. Um, طبعا, uh, this subspeciality is used to be done like every two years uh, li, uh, uh, to discuss the mu related anterior signal diseases. Well, I believe in whom you had the first one uh, last week. Uh, I don't know if anybody from the resident confirmed that point. Uh, last week you had the first part, Dr. Turkey. Yes, okay. Okay, that's good. Today we will talk about sclerosis and bisclerosis. I don't know if uh, people can uh, unmute their uh, self and uh, discuss. And when we are doing it physically, we had it for more of a discussion rather than a didactic lecture. If you can unmute yourself or be ready to uh, share your comments during the uh, discussion, that would be great. Uh, as you an active uh, interaction. Uh, okay, today we will talk about scleritis and ebiscleritis. facing some challenges to the treating physician. Um, in general, usually I'm saying that it is not difficult to manage and uh, diagnose those patients. فيها بعض الصعوبات في الدياغنوسز أحيانا والتريتمنت لكن this should be clarified during the training and one of uh, of the cornerstones is this lecture uh, to know and explain for you guys how to diagnose and to how to differentiate between these different uh, causes of redness in the eye. فالسكلرايتس أو البسكلرايتس أو الكونجكتيفايتس كلها كان بريزنت اولموست ذا سيم لكن ديورينج ذا ليكتشر ان شاء الله وي ويل كلاريفاي ذا باث اوف ثيولوجي اند ذا بيزك اباوت ات اند ذن ان شاء الله وي ويل كلاريفاي ذا دايجنوسيس اند ذا ريتشينج تو فاينل رايت مانجمنت فور ذوز بيشنت از يو نو ذا سكيلر از ذا اوتر لاير اوف ذا اي اند ات از اي فاسكولار اند ذيس از وات ميك ات ديفيكالت سام تايمز تو بي انفكتد Once it is infected, then the immune system and the treatment will be difficult to be achieved. Uh, and it needs time to have the, uh, the response to the treatment. For that, like, usually uh, we are, as, uh, as, uh, as anterior segment physicians, we don't like the infection or the inflammation to be extended to the sclera. Dynamic extent to the sclera, yani it, it has difficulty based on the uh, the uh, vasculature network surrounding the, the sclera. For that, like, and diamond, we try to avoid uh, the infection to extend to this layer. Uh, and this, this is, this is dual effect. It's difficult to be infected. Like once it is infected, then it will be difficult to be eradicated. For this is, subhanAllah, the creation of the sclera in the sclera that is usually resisting. To infection inflammation. But actually, if you look at the cases that get affected by sclera, it's minimum. I mean, less. I mean, we're talking about the number of people who are in the ward. Maybe it doesn't affect five to ten percent of the patient that is presenting to the the ER. But it is one of the difficult to diagnose and to treat and eradicate this uh, inciting problems. So this is the diagram of the of the uh, sclera. Just to remind you about the uh, various structure of the, of the eye and the uh, surrounding blood vessels and network um, uh, around the sclera and the bisclera layer. And you can see here the uh, superficial um, blood vessels uh, surrounding the sclera and mostly at the limbus. And here is the lobes of the uh, blood vessels. And this is why most of the time the immune related disease will happen at this site. And this is why uh, these areas are sometimes the, uh, the most common location of scleral or abyssal uh, inflammation because of the, the intensity of the immune system at these uh, areas. Um, okay. 
طيب just a few words about the biscuit The biscuit is, is um, as we know, the biscuit is thin and highly vascularized layer. And the biscuit is inflammation of this layer. Mostly it is self-limiting. And it presents like redness, and mostly it will be like the presentation of the scleritis in terms of diffuse or nodular. Both of them can present the same presentation. Lacking the scleritis, usually it is uh, not tender. It's, sometimes it's pain, like it is not that bad pain. It's not deep aching pain. And the tenderness will not be there. And mostly it is self limiting. Um, can associate with rheumatoid arthritis or connective tissue diseases in general, uh, lacking uh, that is uh, less percentage than the sclerosis. Another thing that usually I'm saying to people and to investigate the uric acid, the new gout can present with sclerosis more commonly than sclerosis. And in that case, you need to do uric acid level plus the uh, basic workup in some cases of hibiscus. Like in most of the time, it is self-limiting. We usually give them topical um, steroid and it will be relieved. Um, and this is why, you know, we're saying that the sclera is having a peculiar uh, type of inflammation because the fissiles that the, the host of necrotizing scleritis, they have sort of vasculitis and that will cause uh, necrosis. And that was done in autopsies. When they, when they get to the, uh, the autopsy of some of the patients who had scleritis, they found that um, the, the main cause of destruction of the sclera was the cause of uh, fasciculitis. Um, okay. Scleritis can be classified in multiple ways. Most commonly, clinically, we classify it as based on the location. We said uh, uh, diffuse scleritis, or anterior scleritis, posterior scleritis, um, or nodular scleritis, or necrotizing scleritis. The other classification is based on the etiology. And it is uh, done as autoimmune systemic association, but it can be mostly about the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Wigner glenomatosis, relapsing polychondritis, systemic lobus arthritis, with uh, and bully arthritis nodosa. These are the most common uh, causes of scleritis. Uh, you need to keep them in mind. But other rare uh, connective tissue diseases can cause, like in Hadi Rashali, usually you need to target your investigations and your history taking to these uh, causes. Uh, the other uh, type is the infectious causes of scleritis. And the infectious causes of scleritis mostly happens after the surgery or after trauma. Uh, infection like uh, TB is common in our area. Um, pseudomonas is another common cause of infectious scleritis, especially بعد العمليات. Surgery اللي دائما نتكلم عنها is the retina surgery, especially uh, at the board of the of the pars plana vitrectomy uh, or around the buckles. And the tritium excisions sometimes can happen to have a uh, skeleton. I will show you some, some pictures of this uh, patient. And mostly you need to take scraping uh, to know the exact diagnosis. If you see an indolent infection with nodules or uh, chronic uh, scleritis that's not responding to the treatment, then you need to keep in mind other indolent causes like TB uh, or uh, uh, herpes can present with, with uh, scleritis. The man fungi can present like mostly in immunocompromise or a patient who is having a trauma with the part of a tree or something. And usually that will be shown with the, with the history. And this is the percentage, almost like five or 10% of cases with anterior scleritis are uh, infectious in etiology. And pseudomonas aeruginosa, as we said, is one of the common causes. Uh, masquerade is an important uh, cause of um, what looks like scleritis. And I will show you one picture uh, we just uh, saw it, uh, this week and the patient was following with us in the, yeah, in the last couple of months. And we think masquerade is one of the, of the possibility in that case. And the common causes is lymphoma or leukemia, leukemic infiltrate around the, uh, the sclera can, can mimic uh, scleritis. Surgical induced scleritis, as we said, uh, mostly it has some infectious background of it, or melting and thinning without 
being infected. Um, and other causes like trauma uh, or drug induced also need to be kept uh, in mind. Uh, this is a picture of a patient. This is a patient who is having diffuse anterior scleritis, and this is a patient who had uh, scleritis post regium and tend to have a pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa. And after treating uh, the infection, the, this uh, scleritis disappears and the patient back to normal. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, no questions. Uh, as I told, maybe the people who joined us uh, now, uh, you can interrupt me at any time. And when I was telling during the physical uh, presentations, we usually had some sort of discussion and thoughts. Uh, had the diamond and subspecialty lecture, uh, I have it in my mind to be more of a discussion rather than uh, a didactic lecture. So please feel free to interrupt me at any time either by raising your hand or interrupt me immediately, or write in the chat if you have any, any question or concern. Um, this is the other classification that we're saying. Nohan, we, we classify the sclerosis to anterior and posterior, and anterior will be diffuse and nodular, and uh, necrotizing and non-necrotizing. If it is with uh, inflammation or without inflammation, if it is without inflammation, we call it scleromalacia perforans, and this is mostly common in rheumatoid arthritis. And usually, we don't want to have this happen. And you can see this is a patient who was poorly controlled uh, of his rheumatoid arthritis, end up with this anterior staphyloma and very thin uh, sclera. The posterior scleritis is, again, it mostly a diffuse uh, part, highly nodular and can present with thickening with the B-scan and the hand can be fold when you examine their fundus. And this is how would you uh, diagnose posterior uh, scleritis. Um, and this is the, the, um, the, the posterior scleritis by ultrasound. You can see there's increased the thickness and you may see uh, a nodule as well. This is the famous T signs, and it is related to there is a fluid collection around the optic nerve giving you the T shape. This is what we are saying. It is like a T shape uh, presentation. You can see it in the monitor. Uh, there is obliteration of this uh, space and giving you the uh, feeling of a, a T shape uh, scleritis. One important question that usually you are facing, are, and also we are in the clinic facing this, is this a patient having conjunctivitis or ibiscleritis or uveitis or other causes of redness? And it is a bit challenging to know the differentiation between these uh, entities. Uh, if any one of the resident can help us to differentiate, can give us some signs. Can volunteer. Or should I pick somebody by chance? Hopefully, we'll have some, uh, we'll not have problem with the microphone. Hiba, uh, uh, if you have the microphone, Hiba Sharif. And the microphone, Yes, Professor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, first, um, by my history, it can help us. Uh, the presence of the discharge, the intensity of pain that he's having. Uh, also, if there, it is bilateral or unilateral. Is there any history of upper respiratory tract infection or not? And, and by examination, the type of injection, is it uh, more of um, a red eye or is it a, re a red or pink eye? Um, how do, is it diffuse injection or not? Is there any follicular reaction or not? Is there any pseudomembranes? Or also, if there is a tenderness while I'm pressing on the eye or not. Um, sometimes, if they're having blue hue with the scleritis. Mm -hmm. Jamil, yeah, this is this is yeah, I most of the of the differentiation, um, as you said, uh, history and collecting some of the signs that would would help. But conjunctivitis will be easier uh, if you have discharge or recurrent. Uh, inflammation or redness, uh, mostly it is bilateral. And it is some cases that you have 
unilateral conjunctivitis, but luckily these are rare. Uh, like in association with discharges, uh, papillary reaction, follicular reaction, also would help. The conjunctivitis إلى حد ما سهلة حتى ولو كانت الأمور يعني برضو تطورت. You can install 2.5 phenylephrine. حتى ما هو 10, 2.5 and will clarify things for you. Um, the um, conjunctivitis will blanch and disappear. The patient will go back to normal blood vessels. تجي الإشكالية ال episcleritis and scleritis. And here you need to have some clear signs uh, to differentiate. ذكرنا بداية tenderness usually with scleritis you will have more uh, tenderness um, uh, with scleritis. What else? خلنا uh, نشوف ياسر ياسر. أنا معلش أنا الزملاء resident في هذا البرنامج يمكن ما يكون يعني أعرفهم بس I will pick up names that shown in my my screen. ياسر الثنيان معنا اوكي يمكن عندك مشكله في المايكروفون اي بدي من الزملاء والزميلات هاو تو ديفينشيت بين بيسكلرايتس اند سكلرايتس احنا قلنا تندرنس از وان اني اذر اوبينيون ها كلكم عندكم مشكله في الميكروفونات ما في احد يبغى ي... Let's go back. يبدو لي في مشكله في الكونكشن. عبير السلام عليكم السلام كويس عبير انا خلينا نقثينا شوي تلس هاو تو ديفرنشيت بين سكلرايتس اند سكلرايتس فيرست وي كان ديفرنشيت باي ذا سيمتومز يعني ذا بين اتس مور تندر وذ سكلرايتس اوكي اند وي كان بوت 10% فينالفرين اوكي طيب الموضوع الفينالفرين يوجوالي تز دائما عليه كلام كثير لكن الفينالفرين 10% موستلي تز نوت ريدي افيلبل ان ذا كلينيك واحيانا حتى يكون له سايد افكت ف ات از نوت ذات سمثينغ ذات يو ويل ديبند موستلي اون ات يعني قلنا التندرنس بدايه البريزنس اوف ثينينغ اند اول ساينز اوف سكاي ذات مي هيلب خاصه لما كان يو كان سي ذا يو في ال شو ذات انديكيت انه ذيس از اسكلرايتس راذر ذان اسكلرايتس احيانا يكون في بلو يعني هو around the of that inflammation and can raise as well to give you like a nodule. كل هذه suggestive of sclerosis. The other thing will be at the end. If it is if it's sclerosis, it will be blanched. If it is sclerosis, will not be blanched. But it's diamond. يعني هذا شيء. It is written in the books and you can say it in the discussion. لكن the yield of it in in practical use is not that much. فهذه مشكلة ثانية أحيانا مع مع الفين على الفين. لكن the other signs are more important اللي هي tenderness the presence of blue who surrounding surrounding the the nodule or the inflammation presence of thinning or previous thinning هذه أحيانا تشوفها حتى without the slit lamp أحيانا تشوفها with the with the torch that is good to to be shine to know هذه يعني بعض الأشياء اللي ممكن can differentiate between these these causes واضح These are the, the uh, maybe the thing what we said, the presence of edema, uh, phenylephrine, and uh, this is the differentiation. طيب. What are the workup? طبعا دائما لما يكون في first presentation of scleritis, mostly it is we deal with it as uveitis. And that is something that you don't need to, uh, you know, most of the time it is idiopathic. Again, like in the anterior uveitis. For, with the uh, simple treatment, like topical uh, steroid, Uh, mostly an FML and a uh, non-steroidals, and you need to keep in mind the side effect of non-steroidals. معناها قليلة لكن it is important to look at them. فمهم إنك you need to look at the side effects. So if, if the patient is healthy, otherwise you can start non-steroidals for uh, one to two weeks and observe the situation. If they, this disappears and it happens again, then 
will exist. If not, or if there is an association with the history, when you take the patient history, you said, you know, I have joint pain, or I have some skin changes, or this is a repeated attack, then you need to do the basic uh, workup. And mostly, you will do CBC, and you will look for connective tissue diseases, like uh, including spondra, uh, sorry, rheumatoid factors, uh, ANA, um, and C anca and B anca. Uh, mostly, this will be uh, enough. Illa, illa may kun andik fil history some guiding to other uh, rare causes, like a patient who's having uh, lung problem or he has another association, then you can go deep and you dig in the history. Again, uh, uric acid level is an important parameter uh, 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 indicator uh, to be taken, and you need to, uh, to uh, measure it in the blood. Um, this is usually what we are uh, doing in these cases. Um, and here now we reach to the, with the management. Most of the management, as we said, it will be medical. The first line will be uh, non-steroidals. There is usually a thought of star starting another non-steroidal. I usually don't do it myself. If they fail from the first one, I usually shift to the systemic steroid um, in a short course. Um, and then you will observe. If the patient had recurrence after the short course of steroid after discontinuation, or you cannot wean them from steroid, then this is the time of immunosuppression uses. And I know Baba Zumala, they started immunosuppression from the start, but I usually give it a try, keeping in mind the, uh, the percentage of uh, idiopathic and the percentage of self-limiting disease that they may had one attack, and that's it. Like Nibda, in a stepwise treatment, a non-steroidal, uh, no improvement, short course of uh, systemic steroid, mostly half dose. And tell them 60 kgs, I give 30 to 40 milligram and tapered over three to four weeks. Uh, patient resolved and has no problems, uh, well and good. If patient didn't completely or during the tapering, he had recurrence or had recurrence after a couple of months, then it is the time to start short steroid with non steroid. Uh, mostly, uh, sorry, with a short course of steroid and immunosuppressive. And mostly we are talking about methotrexate. To, yani this is the gold standard. Celsept is another good medication. You need to know if it is uh, other, like Wegener gametose, you need to use strong treatment like rituximab. Now there are increasing reports of using uh, rituximab even with idiopathic scleritis. Um, like as we know, rituximab is affecting the B cells and it is one of, considered one of the strong medications that will not use it unless we have strong indication. Uh, surgical, uh, mostly it is done for diagnostic ahyanan, let me call it any sort of masquerade or a patient who is not responding. Uh, other surgical intervention like cataract or glaucoma, which is managing the complications, need to be done under uh, good control of the inflammation. Uh, and mostly we, we treat them or we deal with them like the uveitis patient. We need to control them with, with systemic uh, immunosuppressive, uh, pre-operatively and immediately post-operative, and you, then you monitor the uh, the response. Okay. Um, any um, question, comment? No, no questions. That is my it has to, you have some questions for us so far. Uh, Mohanad with us, Mohanad. Are you with us, yeah, Mohanad Al Khalifa? حياك الله بروف ام درايفنج بس فيديو بالصوت معك لا درايفنج ما نبغاك يعني ت... يمكن نشوف راكان يمكن راكان از نوت درايفنج خلينا نشوف راكان راكان العيسى يس بروف حياك ها راكان لا تصير تسوق برو سم اقول لا تصير تسوق لا لا ما اسوق <تصفيق> طيب اني uh, كويشن um, uh, yeah, I have one question. If we are having anterior scleritis and we tried instead, do you go for another instead uh, before you consider systemic steroid or only one type and that's it? No, mostly I use one type. 
موستلي اي يوز ون تايب على الاقل في, في الابيسود ذات ايم تريتنج يعني ليتس سي انه والله اي جيف نان ستيرويدال ابيوبروفين فور ون ويك اند ذن ذا بيشنت ديدنت امبروف افتر ون ويك اور 10 دايز اي ديدنت اي ويل نوت جو تو انذر نان ستيرويدال لاني اعتقد انه ويفنج ذي سكليرايتس فور كابل اوف دايز از مور ديستركتيف يعني it is not the time that you try one and give another لكن ممكن في الاذر ابيسود if you think the first episode stays longer than what you are expecting وتبغى تعطيه مثلا selective non-steroidals that is يعني good thought لكن mostly if they fail non-steroidal with this current treatment I usually shift to uh, systemic steroid yeah, thank you bro طيب اوكي Um, طيب these are the complications this is what we want to avoid طبعا دائما يعني النقاش حتى سابقا في موضوع اليوفيايتس وناو ذا سكلرايتس انه uh, people they are reluctant to give the right treatment in the right time و, ويعني the debate انه والله this is an eye and this is the, maybe there is a systemic um, side effect of this uh, cytotoxic medication I usually say, يعني my, my defend on this point in two point. أولا, if you are not comfortable in treating those patients, refer them to somebody who is uh, entitled to, to follow those patients. Then the مشكلة, if you have these patients repeated inflammation, then they will come to, to a stage that they will have scleral thinning. Um, and even if you control their inflammation later on, that will stay their rest of the يعني, life. وانا اعرف انه يو هاف يعني يمكن الزملاء اللي يعملون معنا في العياده يو هاف كابل اوف اوف ليديز ان ذا ميد ايج ذات ذي هاف بروبلم كوزمتيكلي اور ذو ذير از نو انفلاميشن ذي ار سينج ويل فانكشنلي ذي ار فاين لكن ذي ستيل هاف ذيس ديسكلاريشن اور يوفيال شو سكندري تو ريبيتد اتاك اوف سكيلر فلذلك يو نيد تو بي فيرم ان تريتنج ذوز بيشنت وفولوينج ذيم كلوزلي اند جيفينج ذيم ذا رايت تريتمنت ما فيها يعني علاج وسط لا والله بعطي this to relieve the symptom and that's it and leave it to finish its course this is usually a disastrous نفس الطرح هذا نتكلم عنه في روماتويد ارثرايتس يعني دائما مع الزملاء الروماتولوجيست في the internists usually they have different schools and some of them they are not keen to start anti-TNF or some of the strong medication early in the disease course they may start with hydroxychloroquine or some of the, of the relatively safe uh, medications. Lacking the problem devastating complications will happen and then it will be difficult to manage. Now, with the, with the new era of uh, selective immunosuppressive, talking about the anti-TNF uh, medication, less toxic, the silsept, uh, now we have better uh, control and better chance to control these patients. لذلك مهم جدا انك يو جيف ذيم ذا رايت تريتمنت تو افويد ذيس كومبليكيشن. كومبليكيشن سكيلا ثينينج، بيرفوريشن، جلوكوما، هايبوتني، اول ذيس كان يعني سم اوف ذيم ار انمانجبل، سم اوف ذيم كان مانج ات لايك كاتاراكت اند جلوكوما بس وذ 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 سيرتن بريكوشنز، اند سم بيشنت ذي اند اب وذ ثايسس. اند يو كان سي ذي ذيس از ذا فيموس ستدي اللي هي سايت ستدي. You can uh, look back to them, and they look to um, multiple diseases and multiple immunosuppressive treatments. And they found out in scleritis, most of our medications give more or less the same effect, like in with su- superiority of the methotrexate uh, in compared with others. We um, had them now. The cell that was done in 2010 and 2011, and I'm sure now. The, the records are more of of methyl, uh, of cellcept uh, rather than cellcept. طبعا cyclosomat is a strong medication, لكن usually we don't use it because of the side effect. لكن methotrexate and cellcept uh, are good medication in those patients to control their diseases. And uh, you can see the uh, mycophilate mofotelli, who was cellcept, um, the control in, th- in this report in one year. They had 100% of control. But that it is it is one of the of the treatment that you can put it in, in mind. This is another uh, report. It is good review by uh, Jab in 2000. It's a relatively uh, old report. Like you can see here in the uh, table, the uh, different. You can this highlighting 
the uh, different uh, type and mostly diffuse anterior sclerosis is the most common. Um, the age, it's middle age mostly. Um, female is more common than male, like any other immune related diseases. Uh, bilaterality is something like 50%. Uh, and these are the, the complications, which is cystoid macular edema, and uh, uh, cell detachment can happen with khasatan uh, posterior scleritis. Uh, this is a major review. Uh, it is highlighting most of the scleritis. I would uh, encourage all of you to read it. Um, this is a uh, study that we did um, with the uh, help of Dr. Mohammed al uh, when he was with us uh, and Dr. Berens when he was at KK. So we looked to the patient and that was published in 2015 uh, in a, a cohort of Saudi patients. And we found out uh, the following. The uh, anterior non-necrotizing um, scleritis was the, uh, the most uh, common uh, uh, scleritis. And the visual acuity in those patients, luckily enough, is more. And the visual acuity from the study that depend on what type of, of uh, scleritis. The usually necrotizing scleritis and posterior scleritis is the worst among the visual uh, acuity. And we found out that oral steroid were uh, used in, in majority of the patient. Uh, Non-steroidal also was used. Subconjunctival uh, injection of trimestone was used only in one patient at that time. And now I'm seeing growing uh, literature of using sub or subconjunctival uh, trimestone or steroid injection, as if in non-necrotizing and non-infectious. Mohim did then and you rule out these two and then uh, if it is unilateral, that will be the best scenario to give uh, subconjunctival uh, uh, steroid. Um, other immunosuppressive are as, as uh, followed. Um, complication, um, there was a mostly uveitis, cataract, um, glaucoma was in, in one third of the patient, and the TCI was presented in, in nine patients of the posterior scleritis patient. But it is, it is helpful to do. So we concluded from that study that uh, showed a visual outcome depending on the subtype of scleritis. And the most common type of scleritis in our patient was anterior non-necrotizing scleritis. And we also found that greater uh, uh, predominance of a female patient presented with, uh, with scleritis as um, in agreement with other uh, reports. And, and uh, when we look to the infectious scleritis, we found it mostly happens after the surgical intervention. For that, like any patient who's having scleritis post surgical intervention need to investigate them thoroughly for the possibility of infectious causes of scleritis. Um, this is a patient who had uh, pterygium. You can see this is a patient preoperative, he has pterygium, and then uh, surgery was uh, done, and mostly it was with, with the uh, with autograft, lacking because of uh, miscommunication, the patient was given a uh, topical non-steroidal, was given a Voltaren drops. And after two weeks, he presented to the clinic with this area of thinning and melting. Uh, we stopped non-steroidals and, and admit the patient, give him lubrication, and the patient uh, improved and the sclera covered. This is sh to show you, you know, giving non-steroidals alone drops and calma oral drops in uh, an abnormal service or post uh, pterygium can lead to necrotizing uh, sclerosis. <clears throat> this patient was not infectious, like in the other uh, patient that I show you before four slides was infectious. Okay, so um, now we, we finish most of the basic and the theoretical discussion of the uh, of the scleritis, and if you have time, I think still we have uh, maybe 20 minutes more to discuss some of the clinical uh, scenarios. I need volunteers uh, from the audience to uh, tell me uh, what is the suggested uh, plan for those patients and the and the treatment. Uh, any patient? Uh, sorry, any volunteer? شكلكم عزوم يعني مرة نايمين. Let's 
Şükran ne ona? Okay. Any volunteer? الاسماء اللي موجودة لازم اختار يعني ما في احد want to take this I'm not sure دكتورة منار you are still R4 or you are a fellow now I'm seeing your name منار الجبرين سلام حياك الله يا دكتورة I'm an R3 now you are R3 okay yes طيب which was the right person. Okay. Can you please uh, read this slide and tell me uh, how would you work out this patient? Sure. So this is a 32-year-old uh, male patient with pain and skin manifestations. Uh, so we have two um, uh, sit lamp photos, uh, external photos showing um, sectoral uh, injection, uh, which is involving the temporal side. Um, you can I need them like a slit to uh, to check the elevation. I'm not sure if there's an a nodular elevation at the center. It's not very clear for me. Okay, let's assume that there is no much of nodules. This is like a, a sectorial uh, redness uh, involving the blood vessels. I mean, your 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 point is well taken, and you need to have a slit, or you have to have three dimension to know exactly if it is elevated or any other signs. Mostly, this is the presentation. If I give you another piece of information that this uh, patient had recurrence of this uh, redness before, at the same location and the same eye. Okay. So uh, the pain is it uh, the severity of pain? Is it um, the severe pain that? Uh, it is the pain. Um, mostly continuous all the time. It's not disappearing. So I'll put maybe scleritis on the top of the front shield uh, for this patient, uh, followed by epsclerotis. Um, patient also have recurrence and skin manifestations. So I believe that he deserves uh, investigations at this point uh, to determine the causative, um, the cause behind uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, the current. Let's assume that you, you reach to the diagnosis that it is uh, sectorial or non-necrotizing anterior scleritis. And with some history of skin manifestations, uh, what is in differential diagnosis? So usually uh, we, we said, yeah, the impression mostly, and it would be practical in, in, in dealing with those patients, this patient that is presented to the ER, will say this is a unilateral anterior non-necrotizing scleritis. Um, this is the impression. And then you need to have differential diagnosis of the cause. So you might go with arthritis or joint pain. You need to know the cause. So. What would be the differential diagnosis of the causes? Uh, SLE can be a cause, uh, skin lupus. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis can be also a cause, of, uh, cause for this patient. Um, he's a male. Um, um, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, rheumatoid yeah. arthritis, SLE. Uh, Wagner is, is not is less likely, but um, it is life threatening. So and it's less likely in this uh, patient. But um, it's just to ask about the history uh, as it's a life threatening uh, uh, cause. Okay, but this is mostly what we did, and most of the all the investigation tend to be negative. Like in what he used to have or what he's uh, having as they, it's mostly a psoriasis. So he has some nail changes and skin changes tend to be psoriasis. And he's followed with dermatology. And in that case, we, uh, how would you treat? Uh, well, we can, uh, if it's, um, we can start with the stepwise approach, uh, oral non steroidal, um, to observe uh, for um, uh, improvement. Um, if the patient improves, uh, or if, if he did not improve, we can give another type of non steroidal or proceed to steroids. Uh, the other point also, um, uh, we need to, if, it's, if he's having um, um, like um, any systemic disease, it should be addressed also. Okay, okay, that's good. So this is what we did, give him um, a steroid, and after a while, he uh, had the recurrence, so we had to use a methotrexate, and he is holding without any, any uh, problems for the last couple of years. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. if I can 
ask you, um, I wanted to ask you before about uh, one point uh, regarding the non-steroidal, uh, what is your like dosage that you usually give and does it differ for you? Like, there's any difference if it's a severe presentation or um, a less severe presentation, like you would go to the maximum dose of non-steroidal or you will give like uh, less yeah, treatment? Most, no, mostly you will go, good you ask me about this. Well, this is why usually I'm yeah, cautious in non-steroidal. If you throw this, point to the our colleague in nephrology they usually give you the fear from uh, kidney uh, problems but the nephrotoxicity is صحيح and rare but it is something that you need to be kept in mind but don't use it unless you you need to do you need to do so and who can consider the community is a safe medication like it's still they had some patient who had renal failure because of nice steroids so you, you, you know the UNE and the renal function, and to give the, uh, mostly we give the maximum dose, whatever medication that you are giving, either brofen or ibuprofen, or uh, any of the selective, and we usually give the 400 TID. Uh, and we need to even 600 TID. But in diamond, you need to have the precaution. You have it after meals, but probably have risk of, of peptic ulcer. Like in usually what you are afraid from is mostly the kidney side. Thank you. Uh, the clinical uh, cause scenario, the, the second one, and maybe this will be more obvious for people who can uh, take it. Uh, any, any volunteer want to share with us his or her opinions? Um, I'm not sure if Nawaf with us, Nawaf al khami Nawaf is not with us. Anyone of the resident want to share? Nawaf, maybe whenever you are around Nawaf or just chat me if you have problem with the, with the, uh, with the microphone. This patient is, is another clinical scenario, 36 year female patient with unilateral ocular pain and headache for one month, treated with topical medications and no improvement. And you can see here, hopefully in a, it is clear in your monitors, you can see here there is elevation. And this is the blue view that we were saying, hmm? uh, indicating you know, there is like a nodule uh, of, the, of the sclera. And uh, in that patient, the patient tend to have rheumatoid arthritis, controlled with methotrexate, but still that redness didn't disappear. Um, after a couple of weeks of good control of her systemic uh, uh, disease and with the arrangement of her uh, rheumatologist and uh, reaching to the, the maximum or the, the right dose of uh, methotrexate, that redness didn't disappear. And it is not necrotizing and it is not infectious and it is unilateral. So in that scenario, I went ahead and gave a subconjunctival trimethylone, uh, you can reach to 20 milligram, just use 20 milligram uh, somewhere here and there, and the uh, uh, inflammation disappeared. She was following with me more than one year without uh, recurrence, best with the systemic medication plan for sure to control her disease. Like in hand, you say it's hands controlling the systemic disease will be enough to get rid of the sclerosis. Ahyanam, you need to adjust the treatment. And if the uh, internist or rheumatologist is heavy with the control of other uh, tissue, then you may use some specific treatment for your, your patient. Okay. Uh, this is a patient that we, we just saw recently in the clinic. Uh, and thank you for uh, Dr. Mohanad who gave me these um, pictures last night. Uh, this patient we saw him last Sunday. Uh, yeah, double your meter. And we are following him for since October with this localized redness at that area uh, only. Um, again, if you have any one of the residents want to comment, or should I go ahead and, and continue uh, describing the case? Um, that redness didn't disappear. Um, mostly it is localized at that, that area. Uh, we label him as sclerosis, taking in mind it was painful and a little bit tender. البداية 
And then we had some also, um, maybe it is not clear with the slide, there is some area of thinning here. It gave us a hint that it may be, this is a recurrent, uh, recurrent uh, redness. Um, um, uh, with, the, with the current redness in the uh, uh, in that uh, area, of it, maybe this is a recurrent scleritis. To study, but we gave them the treatment. Uh, mostly, Nancy Royal didn't improve, and then during the investigation, he tend to have um, uh, leukemia, and he's uh, following with the medicine uh, therapy. And then one thing that, uh, yeah, by the command, was saying maybe this is a masquerade, and this is well taken. Uh, consideration. Maybe leukemia or leukemic infiltrate can present, although it is rare, like and this need to be kept in mind. Uh, maybe you need to take um, uh, a tissue biopsy from here. Uh, we start him um, this week on methotrexate and we'll see how things will go. If he improved with immunosuppression, will then good. If not, we will go ahead and take a tissue biopsy and investigate him for muscular. Um, any question about this case? Okay. Victor, I have a question. Yes. Um, here, um, does it look like a salmon patch or is it like... It could be. It's a yeah, salmon patch is something like specific visual people will think about lymphoma when you were saying that. Like in, yeah, it's talking about infiltrated uh, sort of disease to the conjunctival or subconjunctival space is this is what we are afraid from. Uh, mm -hmm. This is why uh, being having a uh, myelial proliferative or uh, leukemia, that may be the, the cause, and we need to link it to the cause, but this is why we kept it in mind. We'll see how things will go with the matrix. But this is good thought. Um, there is a question in the chat, I think, uh, Dr. Uh, I mean, Dr. Debasi, uh, you are Mohammed. That is good and excellent question of uh, risk of perforation. This is why if you mention this uh, modality of treatment, which is subconjunctival tramisolone in 2000 and before 2000 and 90s, people, they will say, no, it is contraindicated to use and consider it uh, one of the uh, fatal mistakes uh, during oral exams. Like now uh, with, the, with the growing literature of subconjunctival steroid in selective patients, I need to have this clear and stress on, and maybe this is the third time I mentioned it in my lecture now, you need to rule out infection. You need to rule out a necrotizing. If you ruled out these, and if the patient is unilateral, controlled his systemic or her systemic disease, then this would be a good or possible candidate for steroid use. Yeah. Like in metagel and perforation, when you have infectious one, or if you have necrotizing sclerites, then you have the risk of perforation. Thank you for asking. Um, third case, this is a female patient with unilateral severe pain, redness, resection freedom. Six weeks back, she underwent retina surgery. And you can see the, the site of the port before, and this is the area of uh, necrotizing and ischemic area of scleritis. And mostly that was an infectious one, uh, it was a pseudomonas. And after controlling the disease, giving her systemic and topical treatment, the patient uh, improved and we were able to save the sclera. And again, which we said, you know, after surgery, you need to keep infectious as, as, as uh, in mind. But in other hand, you have a patient who is quiet, like this, this is what we usually say to avoid. This patient is quiet, but he tend to be a Wegener granulomatosis. And uh, uh, we did for him the treatment of cataract surgery, uh, both eyes under uh, rituximab without exacerbation, a patient gaining good improvement of vision, though he was legally blind in this age, 27. Uh, in, in this case, um, you are getting to, to the patient course, or you are following the patient, the patient continue to have some complication that limiting his uh, visual ability, though his disease is controlled, then you need to think about how would you improve his visual function by doing surgical intervention, Best lesson to go under good control of the inflammation as my conflict exacerbation, and you will go sclera rather than uh, uh, corneal acid, corneal incision. We will not do ECC in these cases, definitely. Um, the fake will be safer and corneal incision. And preoperatively, you need to control them with steroid, and you can maintain them 
on the right uh, treatment. And this patient uh, was in rituximab and reported in this case as uh, effective treatment in a patient who had Wigner gametosis. Um, so in conclusion, sclerosis is challenging disease to diagnose and to treat. When facing patients with sclerosis, one should have detailed medical and surgical history. Uh, investigations when needed should be tailored according to the case, as, as we discussed with the colleagues that we uh, were discussing, that you need to know history and clinical exam, and then accordingly, you can put some list of differential diagnoses to uh, do your investigations. Um, treatment should be specific and safe, yet efficient. You need to be efficient in, in treating those patients. You don't leave them to have the complications and then it will be difficult to manage the sequel of the disease. Uh, lastly, uh, regular and close follow-up for those patients is crucial. Uh, diamond nasal endoscleritis and uveitis, they are not among the patients that will give them routine follow-up. They need to have scheduled follow-up and need to have close uh, supervision. And by that, I'd like to thank all of you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the treatment. Um, uh, what about adding uh, topical steroid eye drops to uh, oral and steroid? Um, uh, I mean, like a short course of steroid. Uh, eye drops, like prednisolone acetate, for example. Montez, this is an excellent question. We have two, two ways of answering. Is it a practical answer? Mostly we are using. Like a scientific answer, I don't think it is mostly efficient in those patients. Like in, يعني, in, in brief, usually we are giving it, um, and we don't go for the bread for, mostly we give for FML, uh, which is, يعني, you don't want to have some strong penetration of the, toward the, eye, uh, the anterior chamber. Like in uh, what we usually do, you know, to, um, to give them short course of FML with the, with the oral treatment. So on steroid or non-steroidal or immunosuppressive. Like in, I don't have scientific or evidence or strong evidence that it will be enough to treat. Then back to the battle of surgery what we discussed earlier, the penetration will be low, and we are usually don't depend on the reaching this uh, medication to inside uh, or reaching to the to the site of the inflammation. Okay, so uh, you give it like tapering over four weeks? Yes, yeah, if you go to steroidal for two weeks, I give the FML, QID, TID, BID, PD, one week each. And uh, also another question, um, uh, which time do we expect the improvement or uh, or what is the preferred time to follow up the patient after uh, starting the treatment? If it is non-steroidal, mostly it will be one week. If you are, yeah, most in this first episode, non, non, uh, it is diffuse one, anterior scleritis, one week with non-steroidal non topical FML, and you will see the next one. If you are starting oral okay. steroid, if you are starting oral steroid or immune subject, one, you need to see them in two days. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? So I have a question. Um, I remember from your last um, lecture, you talked about episcleritis and you mentioned that you give FML for like, just to reassure the patient because usually they have mild pain. Um, if the patient is, if you are like, the clinical picture is episcleritis with the patient is complaining of uh, significant pain and they are bothered by the pain. Uh, would you consider giving ibuprofen, like non-steroidal, for an episcleritis yes. patient? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, usually, the uh, episcleritis you can give them non-steroids. Yeah, it is one of the of the of the treatment to to be given for them. Like in, in that scenario, you need to rule out scleritis. And this is why I said, you know, there is no black and white in between these diagnoses. An early scleritis that is showing as episcleritis, like it need to be kept in mind. And in that scenario, if it is severe pain, then I would more leaning towards scleritis. And in that case, the treatment will not be different that much, like in the investigation and looking for the cause is will be more, more uh, important in that scenario. Even if it's from the first episode, like um, it's not a recurrence and it's less like clinically, it doesn't look like scleritis that much, but no. I mean, 
Yes, I, I agree. So you can give them the treatment now, like lansirodal anti, but keep in mind, you know, maybe this is scleritis case. And this is why the Masada Dr. and follow up need to see them in one week and then see things will be more clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, Prof, I think I have a question. Uh, Prof, regarding the management, when do you say uh, it is uh, efficient management? Like if the patient on oral non-steroidal for like scleritis and he's responding, but once he stops the medication, he has a recurrence. Uh, do, we, do we go uh, uh, to another medication or do we continue uh, on the same medication for like a, a long period? This is a good question. So, to give the scenario, a patient that you give non-steroidal, he improved or she improved in one week, two weeks, all the symptoms disappear and patient is happy and he's fine. After two, three weeks, one month, two months, three months, she came back with recurrence. At the swan, Sahih? Yes, Sahih. When she stopped the medication, she came, no, she had a relapse. Back, not the course, it disappeared completely and after a couple of weeks, she had recurrence. This is called recurrence. And in that case, mostly there will be need to have investigations and the possibility of oral steroid will be higher than non steroid. Right. That's the scenario. The scenario is that during the treatment, after one week, they improved. And the moment that you stop it in the second day, they relapse. When they have back to pain. This is failure of treatment. And here, you need to give steroid immediately. Immediately, and you, you, you see. Type right. other steroids in both scenarios, a patient improved. Uh, the symptoms disappear, a patient is happy, you table it and you see it, a patient, you give him follow up after one week, he or she is happy, and then after three months, she had recurrence. 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 In, in that case, you will give the steroid and immunosuppressive. And in that case, one important thing to rule out is the infectious, like TB, like real investigation for diagnosis, you need to clear her for immunosuppressive treatment. فهذه الآن three scenarios or four scenarios that the possibility of the treatment كيف بتصير واضح دكتورة؟ yes واضح يعطيك العافية طيب uh, okay and by that I would like to thank all of you and I will leave the floor to maybe دكتور رضوان I will give the the grand round and thank you all of you and enjoy the rest of the day